Joseph changed his attitude in the pit. Judah was the one who said, it's not good for our brother, his blood to be on our hands. Now, by the time they reached, Midianites had come by and they were, he was sold as a slave. He had to guard his spirit when he was a slave. Nobody likes to be a slave. Nobody likes submission. And that is probably why the Bible says, submit to one another. Because submission is not easy. If it was easy, it, they didn't have to say it. Breathing is easy. That is why we don't have a verse in the Bible that says, please take oxygen inside and release carbon dioxide lest you die. There is no such Bible verse. But submit to one another is in the Bible. Submit to your husband is in the Bible. So obey your leaders is in the Bible. Why? Because that is the difficult one. That is the hard one. That is where the enemy will test you. Every single place the slave master would take and, and show the slaves to the people. And Joseph could not show an attitude. He had to submit. And he had to be reverent. Even though he was a slave. So that he could be sold to the best house. To the best master. And he was sold to whom? The Potiphar's house. An Egyptian master. I want you to come with me in this moment. Because... It's important for you to visually be able to see this. Here is Joseph, a young man, being sold from one hand to another. Now he's being sold to the Potiphar's house. He was one of the general in the army of Egypt. And he's being sold there for a reason. They, there is a testimony that Joseph has developed as a slave. And the testimony is, this guy is good. This guy didn't give me any trouble. This guy is worth investing into. So the Egyptian master gets the best slave. And that's our beloved Joseph. And now you've got to understand, when he comes in and starts serving the master, it's not easy. Because there is a memory of the past. There is a memory of freedom. There is a memory of the fact that he was the youngest in the house. He had all the brothers doing the hard work. He was treated. How many of you know the youngest is treated uh, a little different than... Come on, talk to me. There's some young people nodding saying no, but they have no clue. They don't understand what the olders had to suffer. You know, and somehow we are harder on the firstborn, and, but the younger gets away with a lot more of things that the older didn't get away with. And Joseph is from that house. He enjoyed freedom. He enjoyed being pampered, being the youngest in the house. But here he is now. He is a servant. He is a servant and now there he has to change all his ways. Now one of the first things that he has to do as a slave there, one of the foremost things. Now you've got to understand, he is a Hebrew. He speaks Hebrew. He, the first thing that they do when they change hand over him is, listen, if you want to survive here, there is no talking your language you got to learn the language of the Egyptians. You can't get away with talking your language. In order for you to survive in the Egyptian's house, one of the foremost things that you need to do is to learn the language of the house. Now, there are some people who say, no, I don't care about you guys. My Hebrew language is like the highest. It, it's the language of God. God speaks to people in Hebrew and, you know, they want to hold on to their native language. But Joseph was a smart, intelligent man. He said, in order for me to survive here, I have to learn the language of the house. And I want you to notice 
when god wants to create when god wants to change the culture of a land god always used people that understood the language of the land one of the foremost things that when god told me that he was going to use me in canada you got to understand i only preached in my mother tongue i was up, i was 19 years old when i first preached in english 19 years old was the first time ever that i preached in english till 19 i, I started preaching at 7 so for 12 years i preached in my mother tongue every week and one day i'm sitting i'm, I'm invited to preach to 30 doctors and they're looking at me and saying we don't understand your mother tongue can you preach in english i'm like oh god help me right now I I don't know how I survived but I used all the broken English I could after the meeting there was a lady who came with three sheets of paper I thought it was a prayer request or something but it was all my English grammar mistakes <laughs> I made up my mind if God is calling me for a revival of Canada I must change my language yeah. <laughs> Now If you look at Moses there is a reason why God could use Moses It wasn't enough that Moses was anointed Moses had to be trained in Egypt in the language of Egypt in the ways of Egypt Because in order for me to create such a great exodus in order for me to trust you with such greatness i need you to be flexible enough to change your language and the faster you are able to adapt to learn a new language the more god can use you to impact a culture a generation that you've never imagined let me explain to you there is another young man named daniel Daniel chapter 1 verse 4 please the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 4 when Daniel was exiled the gentile king is searching for people among israelites and he says find me youths without blemish of good appearance skillful in all wisdom endowed with knowledge understanding learning and copy and competent to stand in the king's palace competent able ability to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and the language language of the chaldeans brother daniel no matter how anointed you are no matter how many visions you are able to see in order for you to be effective in this culture in this generation before these gentile king you have to stretch yourself and be able to learn a new language how i'm going to provoke some some religious christians here <laughs> because we don't understand the ways of god in order for god to use somebody they must you must have the desire to stretch yourself to expand yourself and learn i'm going to tell you something that has inspired me for a long time is from the life of apostle paul he was not somebody that walked with jesus the disciples walk with jesus but not apostle paul but apostle paul was well trained in literature and apostle paul wrote the majority of the epistles in the new testament than all the disciples put together why because god used his ability to study and learn and think 
Now, just because you have God on your side does not give you permission to stop thinking. Just because you have God on your side doesn't mean that you can take a leave of absence to your common sense. Just because you have God on your side doesn't mean that you can stay lazy and God will lift you up. No, no, no. You need to do everything in your power to learn a new language. And if you're able to expand yourself, God will set you up for promotion. Imagine Joseph saying, listen, I don't like all this. I don't care about this. I, I'm just excited. I, I, I'm happy as a Hebrew. Just leave me alone. I'll do whatever you guys want, but don't ask me to learn your language. Joseph would have never been promoted in that house. He would have been promoted elsewhere, but not in the Egyptian's house. But the language you learn now is what is going to determine your next many, many years to come. We would never hear the story of Joseph becoming the prime minister of Egypt. A slave becoming the prime minister of a land would never happen if he didn't talk and understand the language of the generation. We have to be conscious to learn the language of the generation around you. Otherwise, we'll find that we are preaching, we are praying, we are doing so many things, but we leave no impact in this generation. Find, research and find what is the language of the environment that God is releasing you to. And start learning that. If God says, I want to bless your business, don't just sit at home and say, God bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, find a diploma, find a school, find, oh pastor, I'm too old for that. Listen, if you're too old to learn, why must God now bless you in that area? There is no excuse. There is no excuse. The day we stop learning, is the day we stop growing. Hi there. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe below and share, and we'll catch you next time.